think we are very fortunate inheritors of this dream. You know, as I said, uh, I think to be involved in the construction and conservation of a cathedral is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, of course, we have a very beautiful cathedral, one of the finest in the world. And the amazing thing is that it was built uh, towards the end of the last century, the first half of it at any rate. How people in that day and age, when Sydney was little more than a colony, how they could build a, a, a structure of that nature just boggles the mind, I think. When I came here as Archbishop in 1983, uh, the uh, cathedral for me was a, you know, a matter of major concern because over the years it had deteriorated. The stonework particularly had suffered by reason of well wear and tear, uh, pollution, and uh, are just the ravages of time, I suppose. It had received uh, periodic uh, maintenance, obviously, over the years, but a building like that has to undergo a major restoration every 50 or 100 years at least. And it was just my luck to find myself in the position where it had to be done at this time. It was about June of 93 that uh, at a meeting of the Finance Committee, which is an advisory committee to the Cardinal, uh, somebody suggested that it was uh, about time we started to restore the cathedral in a, in a logical way rather than just haphazardly. And they said, what about you, John Ferris, heading up a committee and letting us know what would be involved? And I went away and uh, found nine people who I felt would be the right people to form such a committee, because I'd already decided that what I was going to put back to the Cardinal was not just a restoration uh, proposition, but in fact a conservation proposition because conservation involves not just restoring the fabric, but doing a whole lot of other things to ensure that the cathedral remains a viable building in the future. So we called tenders, and we had about five or six people, organisations, who tended. And the most outstanding one, frankly, was the Public Works Department, State Projects. It was clear that the building was deteriorating in parts. Uh, there had been instances of some stone falling from the cathedral and that's quite dangerous and the, and, and the cathedral was determined to address that problem. But they were also interested in upgrading the cathedral from a services point of view. They were interested in upgrading the electrical system, the lighting system, the sound system. They asked us to look at those possibilities. Fire safety was an issue. Uh, with the committee as well. But they also asked us to look at the possibility of construction of the spires. Uh, the building has been waiting to be completed all these years and we have the original drawing so you know we, we knew what was expected of us. We, we, were, we were looking at the urban setting and part of our brief was to look at the urban setting. Um, the cathedral at that time was basically surrounded by a lot of traffic movements and very close. Um, this tied in as well when we were looking at the liturgy because part of the liturgy was about talking about making a church more accessible to the community around it and we're therefore looking at the physical accessibility as well as the spiritual accessibility. Um, there's also a requirement in the liturgy for a uh, gathering space uh, before entering the cathedral uh, for the congregation. All those came together in an idea that if we had a very large square to the south of the cathedral, um, it would give an appropriate setting to a building of its monumental quality and architectural merit, um, but it would also answer that liturgical need. It would also solve some of the pedestrian access problems. The difficulty with it, of course, is they didn't own that land. We thought that maybe there'd be some way to change some of the roads around the cathedral, maybe get some more open space. It so happened that in conjunction with the City Council, the Cathedral Square is now becoming a reality. So I think the impact of the Cathedral on the park, on the Cathedral Square, as we call it, the entire urban setting of the Cathedral, culminating with the spires, is going to make this Cathedral one of the great spaces in the world. Now the square is 80 metres long. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, square made paved in bluestone, which I think will become a, um, a, a greeting place, a meeting place that uh, enhances the cathedral. In addition to that we've provided um, a reflective pool and if you stand at this end of the pool you will see the reflection of the cathedral spires in the water. It's been designed by the architect deliberately to enhance the cathedral's effect and I think overall it will work very well. 
In every decade since uh, 1928, when the, when the building was finished, there was the thought that they'll put the spires up, but it was always too hard. There was always money required for something else. But we felt that um, with the Olympics coming along, that maybe we ought to make one more try. But it still needed, of course, support. And fortunately, uh, Bob Carr's government and, uh, and Michael Egan particularly assisted us uh, by a very generous donation. Well, I remember many years ago, I think I was about 15 or 16, someone pointed out to me for the first time that the cathedral had never been completed and that there were meant to be two spires on those towers. And from that point on, the building always looked unfinished. And every time I looked at that great cathedral, which really is Australia's premier cathedral, it, it reminded me of, of what I thought the, the Opera House would look like without the shells on top. So when the opportunity finally came, and I just happened to be in the, the right place at the right time, when the Cardinal and when the Dean approached me, I thought, what an opportunity with the, the millennium coming up to finish this great cathedral. So we were in the, I was in the position where I was able to, to uh, influence the government to provide the assistance that kick-started it. So it was, for me, in a way, the fulfilment of a, an ambition which uh, I'd had for a long time. When we called tenders for the spire, we were very interested to know the way they were going to go about building it. And this particular crowd, Wallers, who finally got the contract, had, to, to our mind, the most uh, lateral thinking approach to it. These two are be used as access to our preferences. We had to come up with, with ways of building the spires that allowed it to be done in such a way that the city could see what was going on. And I think that's probably been the driving force all the way through the construction of this cathedral. We're a design team and we could solve problems. We could work out a way of dispensing with the normal crane that would sit on the site. We could work out a way of dispensing with all the scaffolding so the thing was fully in due. We could work out ways of doing alternative details when we were pressed for time, we only had five weeks to build the steel. We could build it in a way where the pipes slotted into each other with incredible precision and thus overcome a lot of the uncertainty which would have delayed today's event. The idea of using a helicopter, of the, the fact that we had to seismically reinforce the towers, therefore we had to have the steel frame up in the first place, it means that when the steel goes up very quickly, because it can be prefabricated off-site, it allows us to get a vision of what the spires will be uh, very immediately, and then the slow process of cladding it in stone will bring it to completion over the next year. When the building is complete with its spires and with the square, I think it will be a building that all Australians will be proud of. Walking around the cathedral, one could easily get the impression that it's nearly finished. Not only is the work not finished, but more importantly, the funds have not yet been raised to, to, to finish the project. And we still have quite a substantial sum to raise. I think we have an obligation, uh, a moral obligation, uh, to complete what others began and I think we'd be failing them uh, if we didn't. It's not, as I say, an obligation in justice but it's certainly a moral obligation and, uh, and given the ability and the, and the opportunity uh, to complete the cathedral I think we would be failing seriously in our responsibilities if we didn't take up the opportunity.